being a landlord would only get you so far because you're now consumed with maintenance. You're now consumed with every issue that goes on with that property. You're consumed with chasing down your money, right? It really is a full-time job. And for those that want to scale their business, right? Like I'm at 120 units now. I couldn't even imagine having to deal with individual tenants. So in this video today, we're going to talk about property management companies and should you use them, right? I think a lot of people go back and forth about this. Should I use them when I get 20 properties? Should I use them when I got one property? Should I, should I not? The first question that you need to ask yourself though, do you want to be a business owner or do you want to be a landlord? Because there's a difference between the two. And I've had the privilege of being on both sides. And I say privilege because, you know, early in my career, I bought over 20 rental properties um, from, you know, 2008 to 10. I started investing in 2006. And, um, you know, I, at that time, I didn't know property management companies existed, right? I know that sounds funny, but it, I really didn't. I was just being opportunistic. I didn't have any form of real estate education. The market just was so compressed and things were cheap. And what I do have is some common sense. If I could buy this for 10 grand and make $700 a month, sign me up, right? And so I bought many of my properties during the last market cycle, you know, through that methodology. And with that, quickly started to figure pieces out. I think we went to, um, I don't even know it was Best Buy back then, but maybe like Circuit City or something. And they had like this landlord kit, you know what I'm saying, that you could buy and upload on your computer. And my wife would go and print out these applications and, you know, we would get with like, I think it was REI Pros or something like that. And you could make these different publications and we put them in a classifieds in the newspapers. I know some of y'all, if y'all are young enough, you don't even understand what I'm talking about right now. But, but, you know, we used to market ourselves that way. And then we get this application and we do the semi background check. And, um, you know, it was really good in my early 20s. That's how old I was when all this was happening to kind of go through that process and learn and learn people and, you know, just learn the intricacies of that part of it. But now being on the other side and having 120 units in this season of my life, you couldn't pay me to go back and do it that way. Right. Because. I'm clear on the fact that while I do like making money, I'm very specific in how I like making money and making a miserable million is not it for me, right? And so going back to that time, dealing with tenants, then I was blessed. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I really, you know, for all those years that I self-managed, I, all intents and purposes, listening to my colleagues and my peers, I really had a good run, okay? I really didn't have a lot of tenant issues. Yes, some tenants were late. Yes, had to work out some concessions. But for the most part, I didn't let I didn't get buried by those things, right? Because I always was able to delineate between personal and business as it pertains to the transactional portion of it. So while I got empathy for you, right? I'm going to do you the favor. And because you can't pay it, instead of you having this burden every month, I'm going to relieve you of the burden and just have you go find somewhere else to stay. Because clearly you can't afford where you live in anyway. Logically speaking, people don't think logically. Right. They think emotionally. So but when you look at the core of it, you owe me money because you can't afford to pay me. So that means you living above your means. So how about you just leave and go find something cheaper? I get my place back. I go rent it to somebody that can afford it. It's just logical. Right. And so what happens, though, is for most people, they get emotionally wound up in all of the other stuff that comes along with that. And they feel disrespected. They feel cheated. They feel. Um, taken advantage of and, and quite naturally, right? That's the human experience when you felt like you bent over backwards and made concession after concession and all the rest of it. And so the reality is though, being a landlord would only get you so far because you're now consumed with maintenance. You're now consumed with every issue that goes on with that property. You're consumed with chasing down your money, right? It really is a full-time job. And for those that want to scale their business, right? Like I'm at 120 units now, I couldn't even imagine having to deal with individual tenants, right? It's hard enough having, you know, meetings with the management company to talk about the tenants, much less if I had to deal with them directly. And so when you look at it, you know, most, they hem and haw about, I don't want to pay 8%. I don't want to pay 10%. Well, think about it though. If your rents on one of the units is a thousand bucks, you're going to pay them a hundred dollars to deal with all your problems. Oh, like, I want y'all to understand something. I only know one tenant in my whole portfolio. And the only reason why I know that tenant, the only reason why I know that tenant 
is because when I bought the building, I found out that he was somebody that grew up four houses from me. We were childhood friends. 20 years later, I never saw him. And then all of a sudden, I buy this building and he's living in it. That's the only tenant I know out of 120 units because I don't want to know any of them. Now, I always want to know what's going on so that I can make the objective decision. So what happens is tenants have issues. My property management company filters that information, makes it digestible, and then presents it to me as the owner so I can make an objective decision on what we should do with said tenant. Okay? So I'm not totally exonerated from that process, but what I'm not is heavily involved and inundated with that so that, now imagine this, I can go and buy another 100 units. I go buy another 1,000 units because I'm not intimately involved in the day-to-day -day rigmarole and, and chasing down problems and putting out fires. That's what they get paid for. And quite honestly, it's worth the weight of gold to give them that money and have them go do that in your absence, okay? Now, if you're just somebody... There, there's people out there, right? And I don't know if you're one of them, but if you're somebody that really want to be like what you think is in control, and if you want to micromanage, then you have at it, right? But I'm talking to those that really want to scale their portfolio. And even if you got one property right now, the question still becomes, right? Depending on what your, your nine to five is, if you have one, or if you're a business owner, like, do you really want to deal with their problems? Because if you're that close to the situation and you are self-managing, you are dealing with their problems. It's no two ways about it. You're dealing with handyman issues. You know, then the guy went over there and all of a sudden, you know, he wasn't respectful or at least that's what they say. And then you got to deal, deal with that and address that issue. I mean, I, I, I can I can sit here for an hour, literally just talking about all the slew of of scenarios and, and issues that comes up. We're having to deal with the tenant directly. So for me, I don't think twice. I'm actually not even buying a property unless I got a property management company in place. Uh, I'm not even interested in starting a relationship out, out that way. And, and here's the truth. I got this saying that let the car washer wash the cars. Right? Everybody is a subject matter expert in their own field. Property management companies are way more astute at vetting tenants, sourcing tenants, holding them accountable um, good property management companies. Let me put that disclaimer out there. Um, they're, they're much better equipped than I could ever be on my best day because this is what they do every day. They've had training. They've had 10,000 hours. They become a master at this. Let them do what they do best so that you can focus on doing what you do best, which is hopefully sourcing more deals, lining up more money, and expanding your portfolio. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend, hit the like and subscribe, and more importantly, turn the notification on so you get notified when I drop more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video.